Can you remember? Our taste for telling stories arose while sitting around a fire. We used to leave imprints on the walls, maybe to record them. First came drawings and later increasingly more abstract pictograms and ideograms. Egyptian messengers introduced the papyrus roll as a writing support and they sold the idea to the Phoenicians, who fed up with writing on a stone and clay tablet, were only too happy to simplify their alphabet. Each sign will read as a sound. At some point, we realized that our tools define the appearance of our writing. In ancient Rome, while some were having a hard time carving stones on monuments and graves, students used wax tablets at school. One day, somebody came up with the idea of folding instead of rolling the papyrus and using some covers to protect it. The first publication, the Codex Manuscript, was born. Suddenly, it was cool to read by turning pages instead of unrolling. Parchment finally replaced papyrus. It was more hard-wearing, but also more expensive, so people tried to make the most of it by writing more letters per page. During the Middle Ages, abbeys and monasteries, used to be the temples of manuscript culture, where sometimes illiterate monks were trained to copy works word by word. Elsewhere, cities started to grow. Universities were set up here and there, and in time, massive numbers of people wanted to read books. The copies could not keep up with increasing demand. Books needed to be the product of mass production. So, when a silversmith called Gutenberg invented the art of movable character printing, it was a huge step forward. Books were sold everywhere, manufactured with paper and ink, printed with cast lead characters that resembled Gothic manuscript. Calligraphy had become the art of writing by hand, whereas typography was the craft of constructing typefaces for the printing press. Everything had changed. The printing press spread out across Europe and reached Venice during the Renaissance, where engravers, such as Jensen, designed typographic forms inspired by classical Roman texts. Gradually, engravers and typographers, such as Vaskerville or Didot, improved the technique, as well as the quality of paper and ink, for printing their delicate designs. With the advent of the Industrial Revolution, cities were littered with advertising written in ever bolder typographic forms, so everybody would see them. The growth of newspapers was unstoppable, so faster composition methods and printing machinery were required, leading to the invention of the linotype system and the mechanical press. In the 20th century, a speed is of the essence, and we start to view the world through the screens of our TVs and personal computers. Information reaches us in a digital format, and so does typography. In 1984, Apple Macintosh appears on the scene, enabling not only professional people but millions of users to enjoy the art of typography. A screen of pixels offers a new visualization and new reading habits appear. We are now firmly in the digital era, and hinting is yet to come. In the 1990s, the World Wide Web was born. In the early years, this was not an interactive system at all, and web pages just copied the appearance of paper documents. Internet users began to spend more and more time in front of the screen. Matthew Carter took note of this behavioral change, and he created the Verdana font, especially for the screen. Newspapers and magazines, delighted with the recent changes, started to promote their digital editions even more than the paper ones. The malleable digital world is superseding the rigid printed world. The 21st century brought a more interactive, liquid, customized and immediate web. It is not long before internet floods our mobile phones and we start reading on the small screens of our smartphones, ebooks and tablets are the latest technology to usurp the realm of the double page. Nowadays, reading on digital screens may even be more useful than reading on paper. Everything keeps changing in an increasingly digitized environment. What lies ahead for typographers?